Absent. Councilman Caracchini? Present. Supervisor Keating? Present. Councilwoman Lukacic? Present. Councilwoman Martin? Present. Eagle Scout Paul DeCorso, Jr., please come forward and read us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Okay, under preliminary matters tonight, uh, actually late this afternoon, uh, my office received a letter from our nutrition department. <laughs> Uh, requesting that the board approve Pat Heiss as a substitute worker for the uh, nutrition program. Um, and this is due to uh, vacation time and medical leave, uh, an unexpected medical leave for one of the staff members. So I want to make a motion to approve uh, temporarily Pat Heiss uh, to the nutrition program. I second that. Councilman Caracchini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Under regular business, uh, item number one, uh, correct the correction adoption of the uh, board meeting minutes. Councilman Cartier. Thank you, Supervisor Keating. I've had the opportunity to review the minutes uh, for our meeting on June 13th. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. All second. Councilman Cartier. Yes. Supervisor Keating. Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic. Yes. Councilwoman Martin. Yes. Motion carried. Item number two on a regular business, uh, the consideration of all fund bills. Uh, Councilwoman Martin. Thank you, Supervisor Keating. Um, I had an opportunity to review all the fund bills in the total amount of $375,575.85 and make a motion to accept uh, the payment of these fund bills. I'll second. Councilman Cartini. Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, moving on to item number three under correspondence. Uh, we actually received quite a bit of correspondence uh, out we're in our summer schedule. Uh, so we have an income statement uh, dated June 30, 2018. Uh, we have a Compaline Safety Seminar. Uh, just kind of high level what the Compaline Safety Seminar is, is that uh, due to New York, uh, New York State Department of Labor guidelines, all of selected officials, volunteers, employees of the, uh, any municipality are required to attend uh, training such as sexual harassment training, workplace violence training, and many others. Uh, again, it's an annual training that's done every year. Uh, so all, uh, just, just about the, the entire staff, I'm actually proud to say, uh, has completed that training for the town. Um, so that, that is, uh, again, just a notice of the training that uh, we're all required to go through. Uh, we have a planning board notification, uh, item number three. Here's the cancellation of their meeting on July 10th, 2018. Item number four under correspondence is a letter from Lisa Rood requesting the appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the reason why this is coming under correspondence tonight, just in case anybody's wondering, uh, is because the, uh, the Z, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, uh, they, they had invited Lisa Rood in uh, for essentially an interview and, and to discuss uh, matters with her. So uh, once the Zoning Board of Appeals reaches out to us, makes a recommendation to appoint her, you'll, you'll see it under uh, new business. Uh, we have the letter from Quaker States uh, request for rezoning, and actually I, I see uh, Bill Zolak and Mr. Esker, <laughs> uh, long time no see. Uh, actually, if you if you want to you know come up and, and speak to your blind, I I certainly open floor to you. Yeah. Yes, good evening, Supervisor, members of the town board, John Hopkins of the Law School of Hopkins Search for Romanowski. As some of you recall, we previously presented this project over the course of a lengthy time period included two public hearings held by the town board, one in early last July, July 2017, and then a second hearing in December of 2017. At that point in time, the input received largely from the planning board, which includes one of the current council members, was that there really wasn't a preference to amend the zoning classification of this site to accommodate residential. We were previously proposing um, a hotel, patio homes, and apartments. And just to acclimate everyone who's not familiar, of course, this being Boston State Road, the is over here, and then we have this narrow strip of frontage, the highways here, and 
here's the Hampton Don. So basically what we're coming back with now is a commercial project. Um, there was also concern raised in connection with the previously proposed project. We at that point were showing a hotel here. And the concern that was raised was we kept getting asked, well, when is that going to be built? Who is the user? How many rooms will there be? So for now, while we'd still love to see that use occur here sometime in the future, we've taken it off the plan because we just simply can't answer those questions in terms of timing. The site today is currently zoned C1. We would ask for consideration. And again, this would have to be subject to a review process and a hearing held by this board in the future. We would ask for consideration to rezone it to C2. And the project that we'd like to go forward with is self-storage units here, and then some buildings that would be for lease, high-rise doors, uh, for contractors and those types of businesses. Those types of businesses that oftentimes historically were operated out of homes, whether it's a painting contractor, a landscape person, et cetera, et cetera. We think it's better to have space on this site for them. Um, that's basically what we're proposing in a nutshell. We are still in recognition, so everyone knows this is Meadow Drive. These are the lots on the one side of Meadow Drive. We are still showing a green space buffer, and this back portion of the site, which is fairly large, would be permanent green space. So all the areas that are darker green, those areas would never be developed. We would report a deed restriction at the Erie County Clerk's Office and thereby ensure those homeowners on Meadow that that area would never be developed in the future. So we wanted to come in, show you the new plan, at least get some initial input. Obviously, the first step will be to file a rezoning application. This will need to go to the planning board. Ultimately, the planning board will have to issue a recommendation back to this board, and this board will require a public hearing. So we do have a process ahead of us. Before we finalize the rezoning application, we just wanted to see if anyone had any initial input or questions. Are you going to make that available for people to see after the meeting? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think a couple of members can clarify. One of the things we did try and do last time, and we'll do it again, we tried to make sure that we engaged in a deliberate and open process whereby we will share any information that we provide to the town with anyone who's interested, and we will do that again. So thanks for that clarification. Yes, and then we, we do have a, a copy of the map. I actually have a copy down in my office. So do you have a copy as well, Sam? Okay. I brought extra copies. Okay. So, so we, we, so we, we can, can put it up in our, our front lobby as well. Yeah, and if you, and if you don't have a, an electronic color copy, you can certainly email that as well. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so, I don't, so I don't think we're asking for any formal action tonight unless mm -hmm. the board wants to refer to the planning board because we'll have to start there. Well, with the, with the current code that's in codes that's there so you would actually file for the the application process right. then we would add it back onto the agenda okay. and then from, okay, from that point forward we would right so we'll file the formal application then at a subsequent meeting you'll make the formal referral back yes okay yep thank you we appreciate it yes thank have you. a great evening thank have you time. appreciate it john <clears throat> Okay, under correspondence, uh, we have the liquor license renewal for the Boston Deli. Uh, looking at number seven under correspondence, we have uh, the 2018 annual report. Uh, this is from the Department of Real Property Tax Services. Uh, what that what that particular report was, uh, a little bit different, a little bit of discussion in the local news about this. Essentially, if anybody's been tracking our real estate mar market recently, uh, if, you're, if you're selling your property or home, it's traditionally sometimes not even hitting the MLS listing, it's flying off the market. Great for the seller, you get in the bidding wars, everybody makes money. Uh, but on the back side, due to the inventory, um, yeah, there's not being a lot of inventory out on the market right now. The property sales tax revenue that goes out to all of this, uh, the municipalities as a whole actually is down because of just due to low, lower sales. So that that is the, if, if you will, kind of the, that give and take of the, the natural process and, and what it is. But again, it's a 2018 annual report. Um, I have a copy of it in my office, if anybody wants to read it, I do believe it is also out of the, uh, last time I checked, uh, it was out on the Erie County Comptroller's website, um, they're the ones responsible for publishing that document. Uh, item number eight under correspondence, uh, we have the Erie County Comptroller audit for the fixed, fixed assets, uh, in addition to the press release that was just performed uh, by the town of Boston, uh, just kind of in a retrospect, this was the audit that the town board had requested uh, earlier this year uh, in February uh, for, all, for all those fixed assets. 
Uh, and then item number 900 correspondence, uh, we actually received a letter um, from Richard Holstein. Uh, he's actually been the uh, Ethics Committee Chairman for a number of years uh, due to some of his other obligations and uh, family obligations. Uh, he's actually resigning as Chairman. Uh, I haven't, uh, this just came a couple of days ago. I haven't had a con uh, the opportunity to reach out to Rich to see if anybody else uh, on the committee has expressed interest in becoming the Chairman. But if you know, any of here, anyone here is interested in becoming the chair person for the uh, Boston Ethics Committee, or you might know somebody might be interested, please spread the word. We'll probably put it on our town Facebook page, town website, etc. Uh, that's all we have for tonight for uh, correspondence. So moving on to item number four, under new business, uh, we have a request from the floor. Uh, three minute time left, please come up to the microphone, uh, state your name and address, and uh, we'll open the floor. Good evening. Uh, William J. Bornis, 9534 West Hill. Um, 29 year employee of the Town of Boston Highway Department. I'd uh, just like to address a little bit on the controller big story that we had here the 4th of July weekend there. Uh, first of all, I believe the press conference was premature, over sensationalized. You did this without any internal investigation to account for the unaccounted items. You never addressed the highway superintendent or any highway employees to how these items were discarded, which meaning sold, auctioned, traded in, or scrapped. Uh, since the conference, the highway superintendent has asked you for that list more than a dozen times, and we haven't received it yet. You talk about transparency, but you're unwilling to give us this list and the value of each item so we can address it, its whereabouts, or how it left our possession. I believe your dollar amounts are overly exaggerated. I don't believe we have a million dollars in the assets sitting in the highway department at this time. The highway department does not have the ability to pay for anything. All purchases must have the town board approval, go through a fund bill like we just did, and then they're paid by the bookkeeper or the accountant. Communicating with the highway department could have easily addressed for most of these items or how they were disposed of. At least what has at least what has happened over the last 14 years since the current highway superintendent has been in office. You talk about a chipper. If it's the chipper, I don't know if they don't have a list. If it was the one that was replaced by the one we have now, that was sold at public auction, municipal auction, Erie County Fairgrounds, 2007. An ambulance, if you're looking for it. If that was our old utility truck, that was auctioned off approximately 2009. Same municipal auction, Erie County Fairgrounds, Roy Teesworth. We talked about an excavator. If you're talking about the excavator that replaced our grade all wheeled excavator, that was traded in to L.B. Smith in 2002 when we bought our new grade all It's hard to assist and give an explanation when you're not given the list of the $1.1 million in missing assets. You hung a dark cloud over all the town employees and placed doubt on our honesty and integrity. I believe this whole charade was reckless. And when the truth comes out, it's not going to be sensationalized all of the major news, but a small article on the back page somewhere. I wish you took more concern about your employees and addressed why our Social Security for 2016 still shows a zero balance submitted. And why my pension is recorded over $6,000 short, along with the other town employees. You can't correct our 2016 Social Security, our pension. We have a hard time getting the correct amount of our accumulated sick days but you want to find the whereabouts of a plow or a wing from 48 years ago. I find it disheartening. I think you made us all look bad and it made for a long week with all this drama and the social media and everything else. All I can say is I look forward to addressing this at a later date when I'm given the information I requested. Thank you. Thank you. Lila Morley, 996 Boston State Road. Um, I just wanted to um, talk to you, Jason, real quick about the community garden. I know that Tulan and I said that we were going to give you the five-year uh, plan. Things came up, obviously, uh, but we do have it basically all together, and I'll be sending it out later this week. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, Kirk 
Claus Street and 667 for Libra Road. Uh, my wife and I would be kind of interested in buying an acre of some of the town property that's not taxable behind the Trooper Barracks, just for additional green space and not for development. And we're curious about the protocol for going about such a thing. And that's something that uh, I would speak with the town attorney. Right, right now, nothing's up for sale, but we, you know, that can be a book, certainly be a board discussion. Put in the record that we're interested in. Yep, no problem. Appreciate it. Thank you. Supervisor uh, Linda Krenzik had submitted an application for a private party. Um, the date requested was for, assuming July 22nd, 2018. Uh, the time would be from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the town hall using the community room at the kitchen. Um, I make a motion to accept the application. I'll second. <clears throat> Councilman Caracchini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacek? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Item number three on the new business. We have application for use of facility uh, for the Conservation Advisory Council LEAF event. Uh, Council, <coughs> Councilwoman Martin? Thank you, Supervisor. Um, the Conservation Advisory Council put an application for use of facility for a public event that they are going to hold on September 30th for the LEAF which is from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. using the Boston Town Park Lion Shelter, small shelter, bathroom facilities, and town fields. Um, they will have vendors that day. Um, I make a motion to accept this application. I second. Councilman Karakini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Item number four under new business. We have the application for use of town meeting facility for Senator Pat Gallup and Councilman Carkey. Thank you, Supervisor Keating. We have a use of town meeting facility application by Senator Pat Galvin. Uh, this is going to be on August 7th of 2018, 1 until 2.30. It is a public event um, for seniors. Uh, it's the town hall community room without the kitchen. I make a motion we accept this application. I'll second. Councilman Carakini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Item number five under new business. We have the summer recreation staff appointments. Uh, again, Councilman uh, Carakini. Thank you, Supervisor Keating. Uh, should I read all the names? Uh, you, you, um, yeah, you should. Okay. Uh, we received the job appointments for the summer rec day camp. Uh, I'm going to read the list of the people that were uh, we are appointing: Melissa McCaffrey, Christina McCaffrey, Kelly DeGrude, Christian Giordano, Christian Castonian, Castonian, Megan Hopkins, <coughs> Alexa Pace, Dylan Noller, Lucas Kennedy. Gabriel Henneberg, Daniel Janik, Alyssa Ziniak, Jocelyn Giordano, Katie Sheffield, Catherine Sider, Tori Gamel, John Georger, and Jen Shunk. I make a recommend. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> Sorry. Connor Long, Ashley Tablonski, Abby Smolinski, Ava Ziniak, Paul Taylor. Madeline Brinkerhoff, Kylie McGill, Caitlin Kostaniak, Zachary DeCarolis, Derek Wykowski. I make a uh, motion that we accept these appointments. A second. <coughs> Councilman Karakini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, under new business item number six, we have a proclamation for your Eagle Scout Hall de Corso. Uh, Thank you, Supervisor Keating. At this uh, time, I'd like Paul de Corso Jr. to come forward.
you should be very proud of your hard work. Uh, the town would like to congratulate you on achieving Eagle Scout. And at this time, I'd like to read the proclamation for everybody. Whereas before his 2018 graduation, Paul DeCorso Jr. attended Hamburg High School where he excelled academically as a member of the band, the tennis team, and various uh, theatrical productions. And whereas Paul has been an active member of his church where he helps to record the Sunday service for those who cannot attend, whereas he has also been an active member of the Boy Scouts of America since the first grade, and whereas Paul oversaw the design and construction of a life-size nativity scene with holy figures and animals to be displayed at Churchill United Methodist Church in Boston, New York for his Eagle Project, and whereas Paul efficiently handled all project aspects for the design to acquiring funding and materials in addition to the scheduling and supervising work crews, and whereas upon the completion of his project, Paul attended the rank of Eagle Scout in May 2018, and now therefore be it resolved that the Boston Town Board, on behalf of the residents of the town, wish to congratulate Paul DeCorso Jr. for his hard work and extraordinary leadership skills which helped him earn the rank of Eagle Scout as a member of Boy Scout Troop 491. Congratulations. tonight is, I've spoken about this at a couple other past board, uh, board meetings, uh, the, the wonderful world of solid waste is, quite frankly, it's, it, I'll be honest, it's, it's in turmoil. Um, it, it's, uh, you, can, you can tie this into anything from the current tariff wars to other things, uh, but so, solid waste right now, when it comes down to recyclables, recyclables are literally sitting, as I've explained in other board meetings, they're sitting in parking lots because China is not purchasing them from the states. Uh, the, you know, our, our country has, all, has been so, become so accustomed to essentially offshoring or selling these commodities uh, that now that, you know, they're, 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 there's many facets to this equation here, but uh, the, the fact that the, the product is sitting in, in parking lots and not being sent out, they now have to dispose of these recycling uh, products, paper, grade one, two, three plastics, aluminum, the list goes on. Uh, and because of that sale versus receiving it, you know, treating it as a commodity and selling it and bringing in money, uh, the price is going up. Um, Councilman Munger, who unfortunately was, was absent tonight, came and I've had quite a few conversations. We spoke, you know, we've certainly worked with our attorney for the town. I've had many conversations with waste management and even other uh, solid waste haulers. The, the rates across the board, no matter who the hauler is, they're going up. Um, so what the option was is that we're looking at to essentially weather the storm and hope that uh, the, the trading winds will prevail and they'll calm. Uh, we're, we're entering a, a essentially a, a solid waste extension. It's not a new contract, it's a, an extension of the current existing contract. With that extension, we are looking at, um, there's, a, there's an increase uh, for this, which is something that we've worked on uh, quite a bit. Uh, but the, it, the increase basically breaks down to roughly uh, $5 per parcel owner over the year. Quite frankly, I, I, in my personal opinion, I won't speak for the board, but my own personal opinion for $5, um, I don't know where else we can possibly get rid of the amount of recycling and solid waste that we get rid of. Uh, if we were to put this out to bid right now, um, again, so everybody has a, a clear understanding of where, of what, what the doors that this would open, is that not only would it be solid waste, but it would also be recycling. So both components of that contract would be open for bid and those rates would rise. Past administration, always give credit where credit's due, they always did contract extensions. Contract extensions keep, kept the prices low. I sit on the solid, uh, the, the Nest Solid Waste uh, uh, Council, and coming from actually representatives from Erie County, when they when I shared this information with them, seeking their input and advice as well, uh, they said they, the, as a town of Boston, has some of the lowest rates in the county. Uh, they couldn't believe the rates we have. That was due to the contract extensions, not always putting it out to bid every, every so many years. So the rates are low. Yes, they're starting, they're starting to be an uptick. Hopefully this will weather that, that, that trade war storm, if you will. 
Um, nobody has a crystal ball, and nobody on this board can really predict what's going to happen in the future. But at least this buys us another year to see what's going on. At that point, obviously, negotiations would then come into play with modern ALI waste management, et cetera, just as we would. It, it all depends on, again, what, what, what the market rate is. That's, that's our country. That's how we choose to handle solid waste. Um, so, without further ado, I want to make a motion to uh, approve the contract extension for the town of Boston with waste management. And uh, that's all I have in regard to that. I second. Thank you. Councilman Hardikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacek? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, item number eight under new, uh, new business. We have resolution 2018-30. Uh, we, uh, this is amending the budget for the sale of the John Deere tractor. Uh, this is simply a, a move, moving the funds into the necessary account for the sale of the John Deere tractor that was sold uh, earlier this year. Uh, Council, Councilman, Luke, Luke check. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, resolution number 2018-31. Uh, Council amending the budget for the sale of John Deere Tractor X740 Ultimate Ride On Tractor. Uh, these funds were not included in the uh, amount budgeted for the fiscal year. These are on anticipated revenues from the auctions, thus, we need to make the resolutions. I suggest that we, I recommend that we approve the resolution 2018 30. I'll second. Councilman Cartagini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacek? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, item number nine under due business. We have yet another resolution, 2018-31. This is amending the budget to properly account uh, for State Farm Insurance Recovery. Uh, Councilwoman Martin. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, resolution number 2018-31. We received unanticipated revenues from State Farm, our State Farm Insurance Company, for the amount of $2,883.32 for property that was damaged by a resident. Um, it is going to be in, included in our revenues, and I make a motion to accept this money's deposit. I'll second. Councilman Cardikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacek? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Just on the financial side, what, what, what this is is that um, when, when, when in, Unanticipated funds come in that those appropriations go into an account because it's not budgeted in, in the budget hearing. So all of you, as a, a tax-paying resident, uh, you, you're not you didn't see this last year during the budget process. So with, because that fund went up, this resolution ties that that check and that dollar amount in, moving the increase in appropriations from the general repairs damage to the insurance recoveries. Uh, and so that if anybody has any questions about it, it's a on the technical side, but high level, that's essentially what this resolution um, confirms. Um, we have item number 11. Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, document audit at the table tonight has this, uh, but these are two commitments that I had pertain, you know, pertaining to the county audit for the town of Austin, two things that uh, I committed that I would work on, which actually is in the uh, audit document that the town actually needs to update. First document is resolution 2018-32. Or, uh, or I'm sorry, you know what, I said that, my apologies. Two, number 10 is 2018-32 uh, re uh, resolution for the purchase of a new plow truck for the town highway department. Sorry, I said that, my apologies. Thank you, Supervisor. Yep, you're welcome, my apologies. 2018-32 is authorizing the purchase of a dump and plow truck <laughs> for our highway department use based on the specific specifications set forth by the highway superintendent. We. I would recommend that we approve the resolution 2018-32 for the purchase of Western Star 4800 SB diesel truck with an Everest stainless steel side dump body, including uh, other required equipment to not exceed 2000, sorry, $256,108.75. I make a motion that we approve resolution 2018-32. Second. <coughs> Councilman Cardikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacek? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, again, my apologies for skipping ahead there. I had myself. Uh, item number 11. Um, 
this is the annual update document. Uh, annual update document is something that every municipality is required by uh, per general municipal law to file every year. Uh, the, the process was always performed, but it wasn't documented. This is something that the audit had drawn out that we never had a documented process for. That was just, if you will, done and performed. So the recommendation that was an immediate implementation is to formally document the process, which would provide not only an internal electronic copy that can be safeguarded and kept for public viewing or if necessary, but also formalizing the payroll, the, the paper document, and then how that would be provided. So should there be an audit, that document can be pulled off the shelf, provided to whoever asked for it, audit, resident, etc. cetera. Um, so without uh, further ado, I want to make a uh, motion to approve uh, re resolution 2018-33, adopting the revised procurement uh, annual update document policy. A second. Councilman Kevin Yes. Supervisor Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Item number 12 on our new business, uh, another resolution, 2018-383. Uh, what this is, uh, at the beginning of the year, there's the reorganizational meeting that every municipality holds uh, where the town board adopts a procurement policy. In the procurement policy, uh, it was identified via the audit that there was a gap in spending. Uh, the gap in spending was between a five and $10,000 threshold uh, that was not clearly defined or listed in there. Uh, so that one of the recommendations was to define that uh, or in, uh, uh, insert that dollar amount into the procurement policy. Uh, there were other internal measures and controls, uh, so, such as but not limited to uh, standards of best value, documentation, uh, the applicability to the provisions of uh, the overall document, uh, award based on the low bid or best value, uh, the procurement policy, uh, which will be uh, surrendered or inconsistent if there's any inconsistencies. Uh, it also uh, allows town officials that are defined, I'm sorry, town officials designated by resolution uh, uh, for purchasing, for purchases up to $1,500, purchases from $1,500 to $5,000, which would require a, a written approval by the supervisor, uh, and then also purchases for $5,000 must be approved by the entire town board. Again, uh, uh, again putting uh, proper ch uh, checks and balances and updating the document, bringing it within current uh, New York State Comptroller guidelines. Uh, so again, the, the new, this is a new procurement policy. Um, one, one comment that I noticed uh, before I make a motion to approve that procurement policy that uh, I personally saw, that was actually forwarded to me out on Facebook, is a, uh, I actually don't even know if this was a town resident or not. I didn't take it, I, uh, I didn't see uh, if they were a true resident or not. Uh, the question was uh, positioned as how, how, do, how, do, how do you as taxpaying citizens know that the town board is going to even adhere to these policies. When we have a piece of paper, tells us what to do. The current, and this is obviously, I'm presuming some of the reason why a lot of you are here tonight, um, how do we know that going forward that these are going to be here too? Uh, reaching out with my supervisor group, one of the other municipalities in Erie County, one thing they did, and actually something that I'm going to, I think is a great idea, and I'm always willing to listen